We had a vast amount of rain last night. I don't think I've ever seen a thunderstorm like it. Talking about lightning and thunder, whew, we had a lightning strike not far from where we lived and uh, yeah, it certainly made me jump. <laughs> it was uh, quite ferocious last night and you can see now the uh, ramifications of it this morning. If you look at the water level now in the old pond, you can see that it's almost burst the banks. If we get another downpour like this, then uh, it's certainly gonna burst its banks. It was only a couple of days ago, that was about a foot below. And now look at it, absolutely amazing. Hard to believe sometimes, you know, the amount of rain you can actually get. Welcome to the rainy season. Yeah, again, you know, it's like anything else, it's a battle. During the uh, dry season, of course, you're crying out for rain. You know, lots of crops die because uh, there's no water. And yet in the rainy season, the opposite can happen. You get so much rain, it just washes everything away. So uh, yeah, constant battle. It's a bit muddy on the farm this morning, that's for sure. The ducks seem to like it though. No complaints from them. No issues with the uh, new pond flooding because the uh, banks are so high. It was purposefully designed uh, as such so it could never flood. The only thing with all the rain, of course, you can now see that the new pond has become pretty dirty. And it's because the rain's just washing all the soil off the banks. Yeah, it did rain quite a lot last night. I like a good thunderstorm though, it's just amazing to watch, it really is incredible. And as you can see by the weather today, it looks like we're in for some more. But again, you know, this is a rainy season, you're just going to get it all the time. As I said uh, not long ago, generally what happens is that um, you'll get a huge amount of rain for day two, three days. It'll stop, it'll be hot and sunny for another few days and then of course it'll just turn again. It really is quite uh, dramatic, the changes as well. Now yesterday when Pi and I were off to uh, my side, Dad was here with the uh, guy on his tractor and basically uh, tilling over all the rice fields. We still haven't harvested the uh, lower part yet. Next stage is, of course, for Dad to get on the dak dak and level it all out and then get ready for planting yet again. Well, I'm down in the lower part of the uh, rice fields and uh, Looking at it, it's definitely ready for harvesting. But it is so wet down here, you couldn't get the combine in here. It's pretty overgrown along here as well. I don't know whether you can see this, guys, but uh, there's cows in the field up there. They belong to my mother-in-law's brother. Bit of a sore subject, really, that, isn't it? Now we still haven't got them. No word either. Again, you know, these things uh, can be a bit frustrating. You know, one minute you get called to the government office and uh, they say, yeah, you're going to get them in a couple of days. And then weeks go by without any sort of communication at all and they still haven't turned up. So, uh, not much you can do about it, I'm afraid. You just have to uh, grin and bear it and then hope for the best and uh, we'll get a cow. And Dad's still hoping he's going to get two. So, uh, yeah, just have to wait and see, I'm afraid. Just had our neighbour turn up and uh, he's looking at his rice field, shaking his head and, uh, and the only thing he can do now is start pumping water out of the rice field. You know, 
pumping it in, pumping it out, you know, depends on the season. It is, uh, again, a constant battle. Mum's plants are doing well, though. They're really taking off. Now, all the little um, shoots that you see, these things, they're not weeds, that's rice. Rice will pretty much grow anywhere, providing it's wet enough. They do like it where it's wet. They've just planted up a huge amount of vegetables, so you've got some more trellis work going there. One thing about uh, the farm that never ceases to amaze me, you never have to wait long for something to grow. It just grows so quick, the, the soil is just so fertile. And again, you know, when you look at the amount of water and the amount of sunshine you get, it's just perfect growing conditions. These are all the uh, chili plants, and you can just now start to see little tiny chilies just appearing. And with the amount of chili plants that they've planted, they'll certainly never have to go and buy chili. The thing about chili bushes, they produce a vast amount of chilies, just unbelievable. We've got a little one down here, and it's already started growing, and they're pretty big already. Look at that. And that's only a tiny little bush. Wait till that gets a bit bigger and. Uh, There'll just be a vast amount of chilies on there. And what are you up to then, eh? What are you up to? Hmm? All in all, a pretty wet day at the farm, I'm afraid to say. It is absolutely drenched. Well, Pi and I are back into Chengzhen town and uh, we're picking up some cooking gas. Mum and Dad run out, so we're just going to get some more. She's searching for my wallet. <laughs> These are the uh, gas bottles. They, they do much bigger ones. We've got a big one at home and then they do little ones like this. But this is the one that we're going to get Mum and Dad. It's big enough for the farm. There's only two of them. And it's 220 baht. And it should last, I don't know, about three months, I guess. Maybe longer. You don't really use a huge amount. Obviously, there's no gas piped into the house or at the farm. So uh, that's how it's done. It's uh, little gas bottles. Now, of course, I don't mind coming into Chengzhen Town. As you know, it's uh, a really good excuse for me to hit my uh, rice noodle shop, which is where I'm going next because I'm starving. So there you go. That's how we buy our gas. As you can see, the sun has come out. Absolutely amazing because it was raining on the way down here. Go figure. Yeah, that's the rainy season for you. Pretty busy up here today though. Well, there you go. A brand new bottle of gas. Time to go and eat and then get this back to the farm for mum and dad. Well, I'm absolutely stuffed. It's good food in there though. Never any complaints. It's just delicious. Oh, now I'm going to walk it off. I'm going to go down to the market and uh, pick up some vegetables. What else do you want to pick up? I don't know. That's you don't know? <laughs> donuts. Let's see if they've got any donuts. Mm. Hey, you eat last night. Oh no. Yeah, I forgot to tell you guys, I did actually pick up donuts yesterday. Lovely. Uh, you can't beat a nice donut, you just can't. You know, <laughs> there are certain things in life that are just precious. And uh, a donut's one of them. That's that little kitten again, look. From last time. Look, one of the little street kittens. How cute is he? I had a play with this little fella last time. <coughs> Lovely, isn't he? There's a couple of them, look. Cool as. 10 baht for a pineapple. Look at the size of some of these. I've never tasted pineapple like it since I've been living up here. Sweet and juicy, oh, unbelievable. I mean, I like pineapple. I used to eat an awful lot of it in Phuket, but nowhere near as sweet as it is up here. It's unbelievably good. And with pie, of course, it's fruit. She just loves it. She likes the durian as well. Now, this is the thing about durian. A lot of people don't like the smell of it, but they like the taste of it. Me, I love the smell of it. Don't like the taste of it. Just don't. Beautiful though, aren't they? 10 baht a piece. 
and an absolute bargain. I mean a bargain. I think the last time I bought pineapple in Phuket, I think it was 65 baht, and it was nowhere near as big as that. So yeah, up here, for 10 baht a piece, yeah, it's almost giving it away, isn't it? See you again. <laughs> again, you can live up here on uh, relatively next to nothing. It is very, very cheap to live. But you've got to, you know, make the effort for it. You know, if you go to the supermarkets and things, well, yeah, you're going to pay a bit more. But you go to the local markets, uh, you'll pick up uh, your produce very, very cheaply. When market, for market, you have to look, look around at the price. Same, same yesterday, potato. Yeah. In the outside, 40 baht. Bit inside 30 baht, inside 25. Yeah, see what I mean? You just have to uh, be a bit of a savvy shopper. You can pick up a real bargain if you're just prepared to put in a little bit of effort. Look how nice the pad choy looks. You've got red cabbage there, lye cheese, and mangoes. Absolutely delicious. And they've got some nice cantaloupe melons there as well. And this is your rambutan. Yesterday I see That's in the Maasai, 35. 35 baht in Maasai yesterday. Mm. And 40 baht a kilo here. Mm. But this one looks good more, this one big more. Oh, okay. I buy quite a bit of a fruit from these guys because uh, the quality is always really, really good. And uh, yeah, it's not overly expensive. It's one of my favorites, so mangosteen. It's just a delicious fruit. The big question now is, uh, are there any donuts? Hold on. No, I can't smell any. I can smell them, I can. 100 paces, I'll oh, smell a donut. No, can't see any at all. Oh, that's a down, isn't it? <laughs> There's normally a lady just at the back over there that sells donuts. She's not there. No. Now these fish are called batu, and uh, they come pre-cooked and um, pre-packaged. 30 baht, 35 baht, depends on the size of them. You can buy a couple of small ones there, 40 baht. But they are very, very tasty. Bit bony, but um, very tasty. But uh, no, no donuts. It's like a Greek tragedy, isn't it? I mean, seriously, wells coming in and in, you know, cats and dogs living together. I mean, you know what next? such a shame because she makes really nice donuts. It is such a great little market though. You've got all your meats over here, chicken, pork. And again, it's all fresh as well. You know, this is all slaughtered daily. I don't know what it is about this particular market. It's another place that I never get tired of coming to. I really don't. There's always something going on, you know, even new stuff that you seem to find. and. Uh, Again, when it comes down to the freshness of the food, uh, you know, you're gonna be hard pushed to find anything fresher. And again, you can find all your Western uh, fruit and vegetables here as well. You've got your carrots, potatoes, onions, garlic, cabbage, broccoli. It's all here. And it's all local grown. Just reminds me of the uh, farmers markets we used to get back home. And there's no better way to support the local community um, other than uh, a local farmers market. It's just fantastic in here. Of course, it would have been better if they'd had donuts, but you know, <laughs> can't have everything, you know. I can't complain. I did get my donut fix yesterday. I bought six of them. And I ate the lot. You know, I know. They went down a treat with a cup of tea. Oh, look at the size of this jackfruit on this guy's motorbike. Unbelievable. It's just massive. Yeah, they can grow pretty big, and that one is absolutely enormous. This is the sort of place where you've got to keep your eyes open. Uh, you, just, you can miss stuff, and again, every time you come here, there's just something new to look at. Absolutely fantastic place. So, you've got everything you wanted. Yep. Okay, time to head on back home. Going to get that gas delivered to mum and dad so they can do a bit of cooking. They'll be happy. They seem to really like the new shack though. 
Uh, they spent pretty much every night in it since it's been built. So, uh, and considering the amount of rain we've had, not leaked at all. So uh, yeah, quite a good job all around, isn't it? Well, we're back from uh, Shenzhen town and uh, we're now going to Ban Bong Kong. It's a little village about oh, 10 kilometers from where we are and we're gonna go and see if we can buy some duck feed. So uh, that's the next thing on the agenda. Well, we're in uh, Ban Bong Kong and uh, this is it. This is like the rice miller and uh, Basically, the duck feed that we've got is just rice husk that's been really finely ground up. But it makes a really good supplement with the duck food so we can mix it with all the other bits and pieces. And they do like it. This is the uh, machine and they put the rice in there and it gets sorted through and then it basically gets stripped of the husk and then comes out with just pure rice. Well, the husk is left behind and then uh, they, grind, they grind it up and use it as duck feed or a supplement duck feed. Great idea, isn't it? It's just another classic example that nothing uh, goes to waste. You know, why would you waste it when you can uh, feed your ducks on it? I think it's brilliant. Great bit of kit though, that machine. So we managed to get two bags. It's pretty difficult to get hold of um, because there's so many people that want it. The, the, the demand for this is pretty high. And obviously, you know, there's a limited supply. And that little lot was 60 baht. So uh, yeah, can't complain. Again, you know, a full bag of proper duck feed is uh, the best part of 450 baht. And uh, once you mix this up with it and mix it up with all the other bits and pieces like you've seen Pi do with the banana tree, then uh, yes, it makes it an awful lot cheaper to feed the ducks. As you can see, it's not exactly a very busy village. You look down a road either way and uh, yeah, you don't get an awful lot of traffic. Again, you do have to be careful when you're, you're driving around, especially riding a bike, because you get a lot of debris on the road. But it's, you know, it's all farm vehicles. So uh, yeah, a lot of mud and stuff, but apart from that, no, it's uh, really quite nice. Now the other day we were talking about houses and this is another perfect place for me to come and show you something. Over here, we have a traditional Thai house. And the one here is a new build. As you can see, it's more Western styled and uh, you're getting more and more of these type of homes being built now. Yeah, they are pretty pricey, especially for a Thai farmer. You're generally looking at anything between a million to a million and a half. And uh, yeah, it's something that most of them can't afford, but uh, the odd few can, and things are a changing, that's a fact. Right, it's time for us to get back to the farm. Well, this is the other soy that we come into, just to have a look around, to see if there's any houses here up for rent. Very, very quiet back here. Uh, I guess we're the best part of about 200 metres from the uh, main road and where our house is. So obviously, you know, there's no traffic noise here. Again, you know, you can't really expect um, very much. These are generally traditionally built uh, tie homes. Although again, you know, you do get them. You get this one that's um, concrete with PVC windows. The fellow that lives here is a really nice guy. He's a, an elderly gentleman. Lovely fellow though. But again, that's your typical Thai style house, all wood, propped up on concrete posts. I really quite like it up here. You've got the um, processing plant there for corn but it is uh, still really nice and quiet back here. And of course, through the trees, you've got a beautiful view of the mountains. Yeah, it is nice, nice and quiet. It's nice just to take a, a little walk and uh, yeah, relax. It's been a busy day today. Lots and lots going on, as you've seen, here, there and everywhere, but I love it. it again, you know, the lifestyle, the farming lifestyle, does keep you extremely busy 
and it keeps you pretty fit as well. Hard to believe I had a huge gut when I first came out here and now it's all gone. But yeah, a little bit of exercise, hard work, never killed anybody. Well, not yet anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I do like it, as you guys know. I couldn't think of a better lifestyle. I really couldn't. <laughs> well, that's about all from Pine Eye today. We've got to go and get on the farm and help mum and dad out and take all this feed down that we just bought. Whatever you do, have a fantastic day and stay safe. Bye for now, guys.